now for work week weather forecast. Here is the National Weather Service lead forecaster, my good buddy Landon Idlet. Landon, half a day, and normally we would say good morning, my friend, but uh, typically now we would say happy lunchtime to you. Yeah, it's good afternoon, half a day. How are you doing, and how's Guam doing? Yeah, it's really, really remarkable. Now, I, I'm pretty sure, Landon, I don't have to ask you this because, you know, weather is what you do. Uh, but did you see the sunrise this morning? As long as I've lived on Guam, I've been here, you know, like 45 years out of my, out of my 48 years of life. I have never seen a sunrise as beautiful as I did on Guam because there was not a cloud in the sky. And it had this amazing, uninterrupted, just gradient of color. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was beautiful cloud-free sky, as you mentioned this morning. That's just indicative of how dry it is out there. Uh, it's been very dry since really yesterday afternoon. There's a few spotty showers over the weekend, but it's been bone dry. We have this drier air mass over the region. Today, that's going to continue through tomorrow, at least through tomorrow afternoon. And then we'll see more moisture by midweek. But I'm going to turn the camera around and show you exactly what we're looking at on the visible satellite imagery. And this is what we're looking at. We have a few uh, clouds starting to pop over. And you see that daytime heating of the uh, the island right there showing that uh, development of clouds just along the western parts of Guam. That's just with the trade wind, the light trade wind flow pushing over the island. So we're getting this daytime heating of the island uh, land mass. It starts putting off some clouds and a little bit of light convection, but the winds are just enough to push it off to the west. If it was, if the winds were to shut down completely and become a calm day, we would see this convection over the islands and that could generate showers and thunderstorms if we had the atmospheric moisture. But it is very bone dry out there. And that's uh, pretty much the case across much of the region upstream to our east with the tropical moisture well to our south. So nothing to speak of weather wise, but we're gonna see the surface trough over here near the Marshall Islands, a uh, little disturbance that's gonna push its way westward toward Guam by Tuesday night, Wednesday into Thursday. And we can see increased moisture across the region. Uh, what are you going to be looking at in the radar? Well, not much because we do have that uh, heavy equipment work going on to our radar. This is just a radar from Pendleton, Oregon. But this is what's going on with our Doppler weather radar. So if you're everywhere in the Barragata area, check out that radome over there between uh, Wendy's Barragata and Ladera Tower. This is what they're going to be doing with it. They're pulling the dome off of it to remove some of the, the major equipment inside of the radar. This is part of the service life wow. extension program where they are hoping to extend the life of our radar that's been uh, struggling for a couple of years now. Uh, we've got a, many of us that watch the radar know that we've had a lot of downtime over the last couple of years, and this is going to help remedy that problem. So this is phase two of several phases that will help extend the life of our radar. No, I hope our viewers out there really spell. appreciate, you know, what Landon's showing us because this is this is actually a perspective and a view of this technology that maybe less than one percent of the general public and you know newbies like me will ever see before. We we just take a look at like those those geodesic orbs and we're like, okay, well that's God's golf ball. But you know, you're actually yes. showing us the inside of what this radar actually looks like. Yeah, and this is incredible because you actually stand up there and you see how small the 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 folks are up here compared to this equipment. This is some major, major hardware. And so we need pristine weather conditions. And so right now we have ideal conditions with lighter winds, uh, free of showers and thunderstorms, because they're going to be up there in this tower, working on this equipment, installing it and getting it all calibrated and lined up just right. So this is about a one to two week process. And uh, then they put the top back on it, uh, seal it up, and we'll have a, a new system in place. And again, this is the second of several phases that will be going on to renew the the hardware equipment. Yeah, there, uh, there's, there's a question I had for you, Landon, is, you know, like, what is the shelf life of these, uh, of, you know, these radar, uh, these apparatus, apparatuses, apparati, um, and, you know, how, right. how long do they last, how often do they have to be changed out? Yeah, this is a lifespan of about 25 to 30 years. Wow. I don't recall the estimate. I did put out a press release a little while ago about it, but it's about 25 to 30 years and our radar has well exceeded that lifespan. And that's to say it's gone through some significant weather conditions. Think back to the late 90s, uh, Ponsonwa in 2002. So it's had its fair share. Um, but other Doppler radars, think of Lake Charles, Louisiana, and also in Puerto Rico, they were shredded to pieces uh, with nothing but the tower remaining after those major hurricanes um, went to those areas. And so they had to quickly 
uh, rebuild those radars to get those assets back into place. So now we're getting ours fixed and hopefully we won't have any major typhoons to shred it to pieces now that we have all this new equipment in place. Mm. Now I got to ask you, Landon, because, you know, again, you know, someone who isn't like a very well versed in the meteorological sciences like myself, I just walked outside my house today and I saw that gorgeous, you know, the sunrise, the vista, everything was absolutely pristine. Now, someone like me thinks that's wonderful, and I hope this kind of thing continues every single day for the rest of the week. Someone like you, who is like a weather watcher, do you say you wonder how Mother Nature is going to balance out the system? And if we had such a cloud-free day today, does that mean we might be getting <laughs> showers later on into the week? Well, we will definitely get showers later on into the week, and we have that disturbance over near the Marshall Islands. That's going to gradually push its way over to our area. So we're going to see an uptick in showers, but certainly not a washout, not a major weather event. Uh, sometimes you think of this quiet weather as being the calm before the storm. Well, that's not the case this week. Uh, sometimes you get that calm before the storm, and that usually is indicative of the suppression that's going on around a much larger organized weather system. So you have that upward motion near a large weather feature like a typhoon, and that air comes up and out of the upper atmosphere, and it sinks outside of that storm system. So you get really fair weather, much warmer tropical air mass uh, outside of a storm. So a lot of times people say it's so much hotter after a major storm has passed. You have no power, you have no AC, and that's part of the reason because you have the sinking air uh, driving the drier, more stable air mass. And so it becomes very oppressive after a storm. So we have to communicate that in the storm scenario that after the storm passes, you have to think about what's gonna come next, heat, heat conditions, heat stroke, heat uh, exhaustion. Uh, if you're cleaning up debris and stuff, and that's been a major uh, post-event problem in the Gulf Coast after they had major hurricanes hit last year. Um, people, most of the casualties were either from storm surge and inland flooding, but then there are also casualties from carbon monoxide poisoning, from using generators improperly inside of the house, or from heat stroke and exhaustion. So think about those things as you prepare and plan for a storm or a disaster. Um, hopefully, we don't have to deal with those this year, but it only takes one storm. Absolutely. And, and of course, you know, like um, as, as you just beautifully described, you know, uh, weather systems aren't necessarily like, say, something like the stock market where, you know, economic conditions naturally balance themselves out. You could have four straight months of incredibly hot conditions and that would just be like a really, really weird year. So, you know, we appreciate yeah. the insight on that. Yeah, absolutely. And regarding the stock market, I will show you another chart. You've probably seen this from the links broadcast. This is our, our way forecast. It shows things are going to be building by midweek, but this is, uh, you're going from about a foot and a half combined seas to about four feet. So seas and surf are going to be flat out there. So this is a great time to go out there, do fishing and um, explore the coastlines. Uh, we don't have any advisory conditions or even near those conditions, uh, at least in the next week with the winds being fairly calm. But with that said, if you're near the water, always keep an eye to the seas because it only takes a, a, a single set of large swell that could uh, cause problems, especially if you're on the east side and we have these trade wind swells. Sometimes the, uh, you can have a set of swell that's larger than the forecast. So keep that in mind. And this is very common knowledge among mariners. Yeah, I was going to say, Landon, that, that chart looks really, really cool if you're looking at like wave levels and everything. If that was actually your stock portfolio, not so much. <laughs> not <laughs> you don't want so your stocks much. to dip that much, my friend. We might would say we like that to be gas prices and we're about to reach the peak and then it's going to start falling down rapidly. Um, we could only hope for that. Okay. Now, before I let you go, Landon, you know, you, you've shown us so many tech, so much amazing technology, you know, the Doppler radar, you know, the amazing charts you guys have, you know, the, uh, the real-time satellite images we have. I'm going to ask you to flip your camera around just once more if you can, because you showed All us right. a little bit of technology that you're using right now at your NWS office. Can you show me your ring light? What is the preferred? There it is. Yes. The, what is the preferred ring light of an NWS forecaster? You know, I like this one. This is uh, I don't know what model it is. Uh, a friend gave it to me, and this has been a lifesaver uh, as far as teleconferences and video calls because when you have this window out here, it all kinds of bad lighting and reflections on the screens. But this helps immensely, especially with the tripod that goes along with it. So, a ring light is a great device to have. Absolutely. Hey, our, our TikTok game, we, we think our TikTok game is strong here at KUM, and we really, really believe in ring lights and everything. So um, thank you for sharing some of your tech gear with us. And, you know, if, if, if we can look as good as you do on our video calls and everything like that, we're all in. Well, you can be all in with these uh, 
blocks right here. Next week is going to be the big week, uh, Tower for Humanity. Uh, we are looking for volunteers. If you have not signed up to be a volunteer, you want to be a part of this project, go to our webpage or our Facebook page, Tower for Humanity, and sign up now. We need to have all volunteers registered by the end of this week for our all hands meeting on Sunday. So next week's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to be assembling all of these blocks. I won't say how many until next week, but it's going to be a lot. So I hope you will all join us next week. And again, Landon and his twin brother, Brandon, who precedes Landon by what, 13 minutes? You said 12 minutes, 12 minutes, 12 oh, minutes, beg your pardon. Yeah, but, 12 minutes, but, I, but who's counting? I, right? So them. they are looking to set <laughs> to set a Guinness Book of World Record, right? They could own the world record yes. for the largest man-made Lincoln log structure. Is it that we'd be taller yeah. technically than the than the, uh, the largest and the tallest, Two the largest them. and the tallest. So Guam is going to have yes. a place in the Guinness Book of World Records. That's way cooler than any Wikipedia entry, everybody. This this is some seriously legit stuff. So, Landon, we're going to join you next week, and we are going to be along for the ride. Yeah, we look forward to it. It's going to be a fun experience at the Guinness kind of Shopping Center. So I look forward to having you all over there. All right. And, Landon, you are getting, of course, uh, tons of shout-outs right now from all of your friends and family in the mainland, North Carolina, checking in as well as uh, Florida. So you want to give any shout-outs before I let you go? Yeah, definitely hello to my parents. Um, we couldn't be here without them and our parents' patience because they don't like us being so far from home. Um, our, I'm now in my 12th year of a two-year contract over here. So, you know, life has a funny way of happening. But hello to all of my friends and family back home. And thank you for your well wishes and support. Absolutely. Well, hey, everybody, everyone that, that's a friend of a friend or relative of Landon, come on out, man. We got, you know, Liberation Day coming come up and everything. Out. Celebrate with us. Come on out. Which I have to be off island for Liberation. Uh, we're finally getting the parade going uh, after a couple years of the COVID pandemic. And I will be off island in kansas city on a, a work trip unfortunately so i will miss ah. my birthday i will miss the parade all the good festivities well you'll be able to watch it on our stream because we're doing <laughs> some really cool stuff but you know we'll tell you about that as, as weeks come up but landon we appreciate the insight we appreciate the expertise and we appreciate you sh showing up here on the hotspot absolutely and i hope to see you again soon all right Okay, so that was Landon Idlett, of course, the lead forecaster for the National Weather Service, a really good friend of ours. That was Work Week Weather Forecast, everybody. That's going to come to you each and every Monday right here on the hotspot. And please make sure to stay tuned because we are coming back. We're going to tell you about how mental health is impacted by your physical health. That's coming up.